The second longest running musical on London's West End closed on the 16th of March 2020 at the start of the pandemic. Phantom of the Opera was said to relaunch when theatres were to open again with a revitalised and original production of this classic musical tale. It did reopen, but this time the number of pit musicians was reduced by nearly half, from 27 to just 14. There has been a huge outcry here in the UK, but with professional theatre, community or amateur theatre alike, it just comes down to the same thing. Money. Sad, huh? When I was around eight years old, I went to see a local production of Gilbert and Sullivan's The Pirates of Penzance. It is a fact, of course, that Sullivan usually wrote for 24 musicians in most of his operettas. But even back then, as I remember, the production only had about 14 musicians. Then, around 10 years ago, I was a tutor at a local university that ran a summer school of budding theatre music directors. It was a weeks-long course, and it culminated in students working with a live pit orchestra. I used to choose large, full-sounding scores for the students to work with, like Copacabana, Mac and Mabel, Gypsy, to give the students an insight, or real insight, into leading such a full sound. Towards the end of my time running that course, I was forced into working with scores like Little Shop of Horrors. Now, for those of you that know these productions, you'll know that Little Shop of Horrors is a much reduced requirement for actual players. The course no longer runs. Why? Because of money. It just got too expensive. Time and time again on forums I see questions surrounding what's the minimum number of musicians I can get away with for whatever production it is that person is working on. It's written for 24 players but I can only afford eight. I hear time and time again. Once again, it's just down to money. Just as an aside though, when producing a musical, it sometimes seems that thousands of pounds or dollars can be spent on scenery and costumes. But when it comes to the band, all you hear is, how much? True. Now, ticket prices for community or amateur theater don't relate to Broadway or West End prices. Of course they don't. But a recent price of a West End ticket to see Moulin Rouge was as much as £250. And it's not just for new productions either. You can pay over £200 for that crusty old thing, The Lion King, that's been running now in the West End for over 20 years. That kind of inflation over, say, a 20-year period has not been reflected in community or amateur theatre prices, if only. And so, cutting down on the number of musicians is becoming more and more of the norm these days. Gone are the days, it seems, when I would pick up a baton and formally conduct a number of real musicians with real instruments. Pit orchestras and bands are moving with the times. Composers and orchestrators are mindful, or should I say the production companies, are mindful of cost at all stages of their production process. Smaller bands of musicians are appearing in the venue and used as part of the production itself, sometimes on stage and sometimes with the actors themselves providing the musical backing. Even the bigger productions like Phantom of the Opera that I mentioned are cutting back. And why wouldn't they when music technology is as excellent as it is today? I've just completed a week's run of a variety production in a theatre here in the UK where in the same venue back in the 1980s I had around 14 or so musicians playing big band type productions like 42nd Street. We musicians back then didn't have the luxury of playing in a pit. No, we were taking up the first two rows of the auditorium. Yes, trumpets played top seas just feet away from the front row of the audience. It's a bit loud, would be the complaint. Well, yeah, playing those notes on trumpets does tend to be a bit loud. The aforementioned variety production used backings that I had recorded along with live drummer, bass player, guitarist and myself on keyboards playing to click. 
One very experienced musician I've known for many years was in the audience one evening and commented that it all sounded so very tight. Quality sampled instruments have now come a long way. They don't sound computerized or false anymore, despite what some of the purists would claim. Such instruments are now regularly used in Broadway and West End productions. It's become the norm. It not only saves money, but opens up a huge variety of sound enhancing opportunities and effects in our theatre productions. Here in the UK, we have this tradition known as pantomime. If you don't know what it is, Google it. It's too bizarre for me to try and explain. But around every Christmas time, there are hundreds of such productions around the country, and many use a very small number of musicians playing along to pre-recorded tracks. And then there's even more productions that don't use any musicians at all and just play to some tracks, some of which, in my experience, are absolutely dire. They are badly produced and you may as well sing along to a cassette tape. Remember those? Yeah, it's more like karaoke. Not a good advert for music technology in theatre. But pantomime production companies want to save money too. The advancement of music technology has created a new type of musician. Those who create tracks for theatres, whether professional or amateur, to enhance our productions. Now, this technology can range from complete recordings to perform along with, to pre-recorded specific instruments to add to those you have played live. Some of these techniques perhaps more successful than others. It saves money, it saves time, and takes advantage of what music technology can offer our productions. When licensing any musical you may be thinking of doing, you may notice that many productions actually specify that the orchestration requires some form of pre-recorded technology you'll need to use in addition to your live musicians. I've recently been involved in a debate surrounding an established production company's decision for the first time to use a fully pre-recorded orchestra for a full-scale musical. It's a big decision, but it's a cost-saving decision. And for those that may be sceptical or see it as maybe the thin end of the wedge, then they don't truly understand what can be done. It's sad. In fact, it's very sad that I, as a music director of all these years, rarely now get the opportunity to pick up a baton and conduct live people with live musical instruments. A sign of the times? Yeah, I'm sure it is. But music directors in theatre, wherever you live, need to learn this new technology and not be fearful of it. Large professional productions have been using such technology for many years and in many ways. Don't be frightened of it. Embrace it. In many instances, and with careful planning and use, your productions will sound better. Mm -hmm.